<sighs> it's your boy ATM Reggie, and I just jumped off the porch with dirty glove bath. Get to the bag, I did it. Fuck, saucing on niggas, I shit it. People will say that they love you, but really don't mean it. They'll turn you fast, I seen it. I get all right, so we got the one and only ATM Reggie jumping off the porch with us today. Welcome, man. Good. Thank you for having me, man. How you feeling? Man, I'm feeling great, man. How about yourself today? I'm man? all right, man. Yeah, you know. man. I appreciate you taking the time to pull up on us today, too, man. And I appreciate you for having me. Yeah, no problem, man. So kick it off. Shout out your boy sitting back there, too, man. This my brother, man. This ain't okay. me. This my brother more than anything, ATM JB. Y'all okay. go follow him, man. For sure, man. So what y'all boys working on here in Atlanta, man? Um, shit, I had some video shoots, some interviews with you and another, you know, okay. um, another uh, interviewee. But um, yeah, we basically out here just working. You know what I'm saying? We be coming up here from the city. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You come down to Atlanta pretty often? Yeah, I used to live. I lived here for like a year and a half. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, but y'all got some crazy shit going on. <laughs> Wait, you from Chicago, right? Yeah, I'm from Chicago. And you trying to say we got some crazy no, shit no, in Atlanta? No, no, it's different. Atlanta, see, I, what I consider crazy is y'all may consider normal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but because what we got going on in the city is different. But I be in Champaign, Illinois, too, also. It ain't as okay. bad as Chicago. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So yeah. w what's different about Atlanta then? Like, what, what's some of the crazy shit? Oh, like shit? the car shit, bro, the breaking in your car and oh, you yeah. can't leave shit in your car. Like yesterday, man, we got the, we pull up, you know what I'm saying? And the truck, we go on our Airbnb and we in, I'm sh in there shooting a video. Mm -hmm. A little boy slide past, I don't know if he was like looking in the car to see if what he can steal, but the nigga scraped the whole side of the damn car. Damn. And, yeah, man. Some dumb shit. Bro, it's got to the point where it's better off just roll down your window so they can see there's nothing in there. Yeah, yeah go go through the car. Just don't break that window, Man, you know? They need, I think it was too I think we came out too fast or he felt like somebody was watching because he just disappeared. <laughs> Crazy as hell. No, that's wild right there. Yeah. But yeah, that's the Atlanta experience pretty Man, much. Man. <laughs> now what about the food? I love you know, they, they got some it. of the same restaurants. Yeah. I love the food. You know, I kinda Hey, Chicago got some of the best food, yep. but Atlanta got some good ass soul food wow. restaurants. Shout out Old Lady Gang. Oh yeah, yeah, they be hitting Busy Bees, be hitting too. Busy man. Bees, Old Lady Gang. Um, I like Blue Lagoon too. Okay. I like yeah. that. I ain't had that one yet. Yeah, I, I like that. Check food. that out. But man, everyone that tells me like, you know, I be eating some JJ's and I went to Harold's once. They said that JJ's and Harold's here is not it compared nah. to back at home see, in Chicago. JJ's in Chicago is not a, like a popular thing. That's some really? That's some late night shit or, you know, just some quick <laughs> shit. Harold's is more like a chant, like people fuck with Harold's harder than any chicken spot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I went to the Harold's here and I was like, nah. nah then I you talked to my go. boy from Chicago and he was like, yeah, this ain't it. This you ain't gotta the same. You got to go on 87th and Dan Ryan, man, to get your Harold's. <laughs> or goddamn it, um, Calumet City. Okay. Like, it's them the two I like. Huh. Yeah. I'm about to go check them out yeah. next time I'm in Chicago, man. man. All right, man. So break it down. Like, break it down your come up in Chicago, man. Like, what part of the city are you from originally? I'm from the south side. I'm from the low end. You okay. know what I'm saying? 35th, 45th, and Federal State. I also be in the O Parkway. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, a lot of my homies over there. And um, I don't really hang on too many spots because you can get yourself fucked over. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hanging in the wrong spot. It'll be you instead of the motherfucker they aiming for. Huh. So, you know, I don't do too much hanging. Shout out e Dog. Okay. Big less. Was it always like that in Chicago to where it's like you got to be careful where you at or did you start to see Man, that get it's worse? It's always been like that yeah. as far as I can remember growing up. It's always been you got to watch where you at. Hmm. Always because it's always a nigga set trip. You know, yeah. niggas don't go off. It ain't like L.A. and shit where you can't wear a certain color or shit like that. Can't you even know? wear the certain hat. Yeah, you know, these but days. in Chicago, niggas know who you is. They know who they looking for. Hmm. They know what you look like, but it's only because of social media. Hmm. Everybody want to be known. Everybody want to be clouded. So they let it be known where they from on social media, who they don't like dissing. You will never catch me dissing nobody. I don't diss nobody in my music. I ain't nothing K. I ain't GDK, none of that. I'm, and I'm, I'm BD. But I ain't nothing K. I, don't, I ain't in tour with no nigga. Yeah. Like, I fuck with everybody if you fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? If you want some, trying to get some money, any of that, I don't be with all that other shit. I'm too, I'm too grown for that. Yeah, that's wise. Because, yeah. yeah, like you said, like, they let it be known. It's like they put the target on themselves. Like, yeah. I don't fuck with these people. Like, yeah, but that's how, you know, that's the way to get. If you notice, most rappers that came up from Chicago came up this. Yeah. 
Nobody has came up genuinely from talent. Pay attention to that. You know what I'm saying? It ain't really ever been like somebody coming up off their talent in Chicago. It be from, oh, he just dissed this person or a nigga got a hundred guns in their video. Yeah. It be like that. That's how it is in Chicago. And I ain't knocking it because some of my homies came up like that. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't, that it just ain't what I do. So do you feel like that makes it harder for you to, to break through or does it help you because it makes you stand out because you're not on that distance? It's shit. a gift and a curse. It's a gift and a curse because, okay, let me, sh- let me break down how Chicago, how Chicago niggas think. Hmm. If you ain't got 100 guns in your video or 13 niggas looking like they hurt something, they don't think you about that life. Hmm. They don't know how to know you. They just going to uh, automatically assume Oh, he ain't like that. He ain't got no gun. Where the blicks at? Where the yeah. niggas at? You know, I don't never, if you look at any of my videos, it'd be me and him or any nigga that's associated with ATM. Like, okay. I don't really do the hundred niggas in my video. I'm not saying I wouldn't, but I haven't done it because I feel like that ain't me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so talk about ATM. What does it stand for? How does it start? ATM stands for Addicted to Money. It started with me as a teenager. Okay. You know, it's been over 10 years. You know, it's a, okay, and let me specify this too. It's a lot of niggas who claim ATM. Mm-hmm. That everybody got their own meaning. I don't knock nobody for claiming what they claim. They ain't a part of us though. It's only three of us ATM JB, ATM PJ, and me. Okay. Then we got Moose too. Shout out Moose. That's my boy. We got him, but other than that, it ain't too many of us. Mm-hmm. It's just a, a, few, a handful. So you're saying people just taking ATM and putting their own meaning to it? Yeah, everybody got their own meaning to it. Okay. I'm not saying somebody ain't have it before me, because they say everything that's done in the world is done more than once. Yeah. So I'm not going to say I sat here and just, out the, just pulled it out of thin air and made it. You know what I'm saying? But yes, from what I know, yes, me. That's my thing, ATM. OK. Yeah. yeah. So what would you say were some of the things you saw you know, growing up on the south side and the low end? Then? <sighs> Shit. I come from the project, so I, me growing up, it, ain't, it wasn't like it is now. You know what I'm saying? Like, we wasn't just killing and just doing shit just to be doing it. It was about money then, yeah. taking over other buildings. and You know what I'm saying? It was basically BDs and GDs against each other. And you know what I'm saying? But sometimes when it wasn't war, everybody kicked it. It was a good environment in the projects. You know, I come from Stateway Gardens. You know what I'm saying? It was a good environment. Then Robert Taylor's, I spent time in Robert Taylor's too. You know what I'm saying? It was an environment where, you know what I'm saying? It was everybody getting money. It was more about the money then. It was niggas in the projects making, goddamn it, thirty, forty thousand dollars a day. Oh, wow. I, you probably never heard of that, but yes, under the buildings off Heron and shit, it used to be thirty, forty thousand dollars a day hmm. in the projects. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody making that kind of money nowadays. That's why it's so much violence. That's why everybody in Chicago, I know niggas who would rather get a gun than some money. That's wild right there, bro. It's kind of like, it sounds like, it sounds like everyone's just fighting over the same dollar at the end of the day, bro. Or the same reputation. Clout more than money in Chicago. Really? Man, Shoot. shit. Nigga would rather be known for shooting a motherfucker than to being rich. Hmm. It's a lost soul out there, man. When did you start to see that change? Is like with the rise of social media? Was it the rise with the music? Social or? media. Yeah. Social media. Social media. Then, you know, when Keith and Reese came out, and uh, what shorty, Lil Jojo. Mm-hmm. When all that shit sparked up, that's when shit became like a hurricane. Mm-hmm. That shit became horrible. Like, that's when that shit became horrible. Lil Reese, my boy, though. That's yeah. my dog. Shout out, Reese. That's my boy. Lil Reese 300, that's my boy. Do you feel like people in Chicago feel like they have to, uh, like, choose a side when it comes to the, the politics yeah. in Chicago? Yeah. Hell yeah. You better, you, you want, it ain't no in between. You can't play the fence, that's how you get hurt. You can't play the fence. You gotta be with this side or this side. That's just what it is. Yeah. Ain't no in between. Understood, man. So when would you say you jumped off the porch, I would wait? I don't even wanna say, cause I'm, it's gonna, I jumped off a long ass time ago. (laughs) A long ass time ago, man. For real, it wasn't even really social media then. Okay. None of that. So did you, was there any big homies in your life? Did you have older siblings out there in the streets at the same time? Or did you kind of just have to figure shit out on your own? I looked up to my pops. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He was big in the game. He, he let that shit go, though. Hmm. Like cold turkey, out the blue. 
Hmm. One of the richest niggas on the low end. And he just let it go. His name Big T. Okay. Yeah, but he, he let it go. Cold turkey. So, but that's ever, who I used to look up to. Okay. Yeah. Did he tell you, like, why he decided to look up to I never even asked him. Really? I never came to him. And we was just with him. What was that, yesterday? Day before yesterday. Day before yesterday. I never even asked him. I, I didn't, you know, think to even ask him about that. I just know he just cold turkey said, fuck it. Yeah. Um, so what, what's the connection with O-Block, man? Them my boys. You know, I've been in and out of Old Block since 2008. Okay. Yeah, in and out. Hmm. And um, a lot of people think I come from there, but I don't come from there. I come from 35th and 45th and State. Hmm. It's the blow in the projects. But them my boys over there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know they be having a lot of shit going on. You know what I'm saying? But that shit don't really got nothing to do with me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like. He all like my little brother. I love Shorty. Like, right. you know, it's a lot of uh, other guys over there that I fuck with heavy. You know what I'm saying? Recipes, Big A. You know, but basically, I'm on my own thing right now. Yeah. What's I'm, your thoughts on them, like, turning, well, not them, but, like, fans turning Old Block to, like, a tourist attraction at this point? Um, you know, Von, Von, okay, in my opinion, Keith put the O on the map. Mm -hmm. Vaughn expanded it. Vaughn made it more like a, damn, I want to go see what's over there. He made it like one of those things. You know how they say you feel what you don't understand and hate what you can't conquer? Mm -hmm. And it's another saying, too. Um, how the fuck they say it? Uh, people always want what they can't have. You know what I'm saying? And people always want to go over there. But it's not really good to go over there. It might pop off while you there. Stop this, man. They ass better start thinking. That shit ain't no tourist, man. Niggas get hurt over there, man. Like, for real. Yeah. Folks them don't be playing over there. You going to get your ass hurt over there. <laughs> so it's best to just go and keep riding past. Take your video. Take a picture or whatever and keep going. No, you shouldn't even get your ass out the car, but that, I can't tell no one for what to do. Everybody grown and make their own decisions. Yeah, you see so many YouTubers going out there these mm -hmm. days, and some of them even, you know, making it perfectly public that they, they paying for protection over there, yeah, too. Yeah, but see, they be hitting, you know, ain't nobody just finna slide over there and don't nobody know they coming. Yeah. Niggas do that, that slide, like niggas who don't fuck with the O, they'll slide and take a picture in front of Von Mural and do shit like that when they know people sleep hmm. or motherfuckers ain't out there, don't think they just going over there, popping out while they out there, while the guys out there and just doing what they, it ain't going down like that. It'd be more like a nigga ride past, oh, they ain't out here and pop out and take a, you know what I'm saying? But on to the next subject. Understood, man. <laughs> understood. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been rapping? How'd you get into this? I've been rapping a long ass time, over 10 years, but I always end up in jail. Hmm. Always end up in jail. Never for nothing but violence. Sure. You know what I'm saying? I, I caught my first drug case. What was that? 2019? Or eight? When I caught the weed. 2019. Hmm. Or 20. It was 2019 to 20. I got caught with like 20 pounds of weed oh, and shit. like 60,000. Um, that was 19. Yeah, 2019. It's public record. You know right. what I'm saying? And. I just recently went to jail for that. I was out on house arrest for a while, and um, I went in and took my time. I got out. I, it'll make a year, October 17th. Okay. Yeah, I've been out. I've been out like 10 months, 11 months so far. Yeah. So I uh, take it you lose that 60,000, right? You don't get shit. They took my Hellcat too. I had a, a Hellcat. What? They took that shit, seized it. Damn. They saying first they said it was under investigation. Um, then it went from being under investigation to they. Uh, Okay, let me explain. I, okay, they bumped me, right? Me and my girl, we riding and shit. I tell her, I say, it's an F-150 behind me and they been behind me too long. You know, women don't think like us. So she like, you just being paranoid. So I pull over a little bit because I know what I know. I pull over a little bit, they try to box me in. They come from everywhere. Oh, so shit. I take off on them and get away. My dumb ass go right back to the same crib they follow me from like a week later. Oh, so man. as I'm reversing in, they block me in. They was waiting on yeah, you. Yeah, they block me in, go in the crib, they take the pounds, the suitcase, they take the money. So they asked me like, um, all right, so this how we finna play it. It's either yours or it's hers. You know I said it was mine. So I ain't finna let my girl go to jail for this shit. 
That's so they take it and shit, so I go to jail. They make my bond seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. For some weed? For some weed, bro. Look it up. What the fuck? Man made my Is bond. Is it because of your history then? I don't know. No. In the paper they said he fled he fled from us too many times and we didn't catch him. <laughs> you know, I had bro, all I got is Hellcats and shit. Head. All I did was fly from their ass. Anytime they pulled me, I ain't had license since I was 17. Oh, so, and I keep a, a fucking fast car. So, they chasing me around the fucking Champaign, Illinois. I'm flying from their ass, jumping on highways, hiding my cars and garages. To the point they just got tired and like, when we ain't chasing them. When he pull over, we gonna box his ass in and then we gonna catch him. And that's what they did. God so, damn. listen, so back to what I was saying. They take me to jail. My bond, $750,000. 75,000 a walk. I sat for four days. I, my lawyer told me, don't bond out. what I do? Bond it out. I bond it out. That's what they do. They let me out. Set my court date for three days later. <laughs> so I you get, paid 75,000. Look, days. I get the court three days later. You know what they do? Like yeah, younger. take them into custody. We need proof of where this money came from that you just bonded out for. Take me back. They set you up. You should listen to that lawyer. Set me up. Take me in. Boom. He a, he a dirty motherfucker too. I'm going to tell you about him. So I goes and I, I goes back in. They t come to me like this. I right, look. If you sign over this Hellcat and you sign over $35,000 worth of your bond, we'll reduce your bond to $400,000. Let you out on the forty that's left over on the house arrest ban. So they let I bond, they do I sign that shit, bond out for the 40. So my lawyer run me like this. I right, yeah, you gave me 20, but um, it's some new shit going on now. You done bond it out now, I think they watching you. My scared, I'm scared now, so I'm like, damn, so what I gotta do? He like, just give me another dub, you know what I'm saying, and I'ma run it. So I signed 20 of the other 40 over to him again. So now he got 40. Yeah. Get the court, they tell me, yeah, so um we're going to let you stay out on uh, house arrest. Just don't leave the state of Illinois. All right, cool. I run out. I do this for like 17 months. Mm -hmm. I go in. They tell me, all right, look. They tell me, look, you can take this or we finna take you to trial. Excuse me. So I say, all right, I'll take the four and a half years. I already done been out for a year and a half on house arrest. Yeah. So they count that with it. Okay. Boom. I go to jail. I finally get out. I'm looking for my bond money to, that's left over the whole time I'm in the joint. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, damn, where my money? I get out, find out my lawyer then went into rehab and all kind of shit. He then took the rest of the money. Oh, you know what shit. I'm saying? So I ain't getting none of that shit back. Damn. Yeah, that is some dirty ass shit right there, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how do you end up in Champaign, Illinois? Like, what's the connection there? Um, all right, so I had got shot up. Shit. I had got shot like, what time was this? I got shot six times this time. I had got shot six times and shit, but I was fucked up and I couldn't move around. So I ain't want to be vulnerable in a city in, a, mm -hmm. in Chicago. So I dip out there. Took me out there and shit. So I get out there. Um, I get up there and I ain't never fucking return. Shit, I started getting money. See, when I was in Chicago, I wasn't doing shit but bullshit. We shooting at niggas, getting shot at, getting shot, my mama crying. So it was to the point now I'm like, all right, I'm somewhere where I ain't in tour with nobody. I'm making money now. I ain't finna even be fucking with the city, but I couldn't stop going. So I would make all that money out there and I would go back to the city and be trying to, that's how I ended up falling out with a lot of people in the city too, that was my homies. Cause I would go out there flossing and, and they still living how they was living when I left. So it created a lot of jealousy. You know what I'm saying? A lot of jealousy. And I started to see that shit, so I started separating myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm hearing rumors about what niggas gonna do. You know what I'm saying? And me being smart, I got a son at this time now. Okay. So at that time, I ain't had no kids for real. So I had my son, and I started thinking different. I'm like, man, I'm not finna be subjecting myself to that shit. Every time I'm around you niggas, I'm clutching my pipe. You know, I can't let y'all know what I got on me. I got to watch everything moving because I don't know what y'all thinking of me now. You know what I'm saying? And one of my homies threw some shit up under me one day. Like, yeah, you take care. You do more for them out of town, niggas, than you do for us. Hmm. That was it for me. <laughs> mm. 
So what's it like in Champaign then? Is it a huge difference compared to Chicago then? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker getting their head whacked down there too. It's, I'll be back and forth though. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I'll be, I'll be a little bit of everywhere though. I'm always in Atlanta. I go to New York with my, um, with my manager, Josh. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'll be, I'll be a little bit of everywhere. Plus my brother live in uh, New York. Okay. So you mentioned October's gonna make one year since you've been home, man. Yeah. You feel like you, you finally locked in with this music shit now? Yeah, it, shit going real good for me right now. I got some, you know what I'm saying, some real label shit going on. Okay. You know, I just gotta get my, my marketing better. You know what I'm saying, get my name a little more known and do a little more footwork and shit gonna pop out how it's supposed to. Yeah. yeah. You know, considering your whole story, what you just told us, man, how blessed do you feel to be able to make it and sit on this porch today with us then? Man, I used to watch this. I used to watch Off the Porch, and I used to be like, damn. And I used to listen to people's stories. I can, I'm one of them people I can tell when a motherfucker not being genuine. I can tell when they doing it for the camera. You know what I'm saying? I can tell, so I used to watch it, and I used, I, I'm addicted to watching interviews. Hmm. I don't watch movies. I don't watch shit. I watch documentaries and interviews. It gotta okay. be something set up on real life. I don't know how to, I don't like, like, fictitious shit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I feel blessed to be here, man. It's like one of the biggest things I done done interview-wise. Oh, that's dope right there, yeah. man. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's the creative process like when you hit the studio, man? You be writing, you punch in, do it both? Or? I'm different. Because, see, I don't do drill music. I don't, I don't like, melodize my music. I straight rap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, that's why, I, like, one of my favorite artists is Meek Mills. You okay. know what I'm saying? Because that's my style. Like, I, I like to, for you to feel me. I don't want to do nothing extra. I don't want to diss nobody. I just, I want you to fuck with me for my talent, what I say, and how you feel me. You know what I'm saying? That's the type of music that lasts for a long time. The music that people feel. That's why it's so much shit switching over with the music, because none of it is really real no more. You yeah, don't feel it. It's Yeah, you don't fans. feel it. Like, yeah. you don't feel it. You know what I'm saying? They sound good. It sound good for the month. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, and then it's over with. No, that's very true. And then true. they on to the next dancing ass nigga or something. <laughs> you know, it just be like that. So we ain't gonna catch you dancing in your videos look, on TikTok. Not, look, nothing wrong with it, but it ain't for me. Yeah. You never catch me doing it, hell no. Nah. <laughs> hell no. Nah. So when do you feel like you make your best music, Dennis? Like when you're in a good mood, or you just went through some bullshit, or you pissed off at the world, or does it not really matter to you? My best music comes from situations. Like, if something happened, that's when I have my best music. Like, it gotta be some shit that I didn't went through. I don't know how to just make music, like, just bullshit, whatever, push it. It gotta be something I either went through, seen, experienced, it gotta be some shit like that. Yeah. Now, party music, you know, I'm gonna I'm a make some shit like that, but, you know, I'm more like a talker, like, you gonna feel me when I rap. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, I don't do the rest of that shit. I got you, man. Yeah. So you mentioned Meek Mill. Who else you be listening to? I listen to Baby, Lil Baby. Okay. Um, who else I listen to, man? Uh, honestly, man, it's hard to listen to music nowadays. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I fuck with Meek. I fuck with Baby. Um, who else I listen to, man? Who I be bumping? I, it's it's a couple a couple artists, man. I can't come off the head with it because I ain't even. I my playlist is all variety. I fuck with Kevin Gates a hundred percent. Okay, yeah. that's my dog. I fuck with Kevin Gates. I fuck with Rod Wave. Um, I like feel me music. If yeah. you notice, all of those they rap about their life situations. That's the music I'm into. Mm -hmm. But it's other artists like local that I fuck with. That's that's hot. That done, ain't nobody really never heard of. Chris Green, he from Jersey. Okay. I fuck with Chris Green. That's my boy. Um, what's dude name from Jersey, Josh? Al B. Al B. Hey, Al B, if y'all ain't heard of Al B, he hard, boy. I fuck with Al B, man. And it's a few more, you know? Okay. But yeah, I like underground artists mostly. I got you. Yeah. Would you say making music is like therapeutic for you since you put in those real life situations in there? Then? Yeah, because once I, I get it out, I ain't mad no more. Or, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, it's like, yeah, it's therapy. Once I say it, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Like, I don't be really dwelling on it no more. Yeah. 
Uh, talk about the first day out record, man. And you went crazy on this shit. Yeah, bro. that's my shit. That was I wrote that in jail. For real? Yeah, I wrote that shit in jail. Hmm. Yeah, and I, I, it was more like me getting out what I felt. If they, if you listen to first day out, I spoke on so many different situations. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, that's like one of my favorite songs. Yeah. Nah, you snapped on that shit, yeah, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, so what's the next singular video we plan to drop, man? Pain. Pain dropped today at 4 o'clock. Oh, shit. Damn, yeah. you're like 30 minutes away. <laughs> yeah, Pain dropped today at 4 o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Is that pretty self-explanatory? Is yes. that like a Pain music it's like song? like basically, then? yes. It's speaking on my pain. Okay. Yeah. You got video already yeah, shot? Yeah, already shot. It dropped today at 4. Okay. <laughs> shot by way. Young Will. Okay. Yeah. So is there a new project in the works? Yeah. It's called I Can't Believe Y'all Doubted Me. Hmm. Yeah, I ain't got no date for it yet. Okay. But yeah, it's called I Can't Believe Y'all Doubted Me. What type of vibes do you plan to put on there? It's self-explanatory. I'm going to talk about the people doubting me, you know what I'm saying, why they shouldn't have. And basically, um, it's going to speak from, from 1 through 10. It's only 10 on there. It's like an EP. Okay. 1 through 10, it's going to take you on a ride. You know what I'm saying? Once you hear it, you're going to understand me more because I speak about myself. Okay. Yeah. You going to be any features on there or are you riding solo for this one? It's going to be my people, ATM PJ, okay. ATM JB, probably Moose. It ain't going to be too many features on that. Probably, uh, I don't know yet. I ain't going to give it out like that, but okay. yeah, I don't know yet. And what about producer-wise? Who have you been working with or you just be grabbing shit from YouTube or? I got a few, I, uh, AO Muff. You know what I'm saying? He a producer from uh, the Carolinas. But other than that, no. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you didn't want to put a date, but this year, we could say at least? Huh? You think it'll drop this year, though? The project? Maybe around Christmas. If not, okay. probably the beginning of the year. Gotcha, gotcha. Man. So, you know, doing this shit independently, man. Talk about, like, some of the challenges and the grind that comes with it. <sighs> so much fake shit. These niggas be so fake in this, and, and they make it hard for you to, to become big because um, you don't know who to trust. Everybody is out for the money. It don't be about to help you. Even when you pay them to do their services, they won't even do their service. They get your money and do what the fuck they want to do with it and, and get mad at you when you, man, what's going on? Man, you ain't got to keep hitting me up. That'll get you fucked up. Like, for real, they be having the game twisted and they dick ride so hard. I'm going to say this about black people. We don't support each other in this music industry. Now, Atlanta do. It's certain states and, and cities that do. But Chicago, nigga, please. A motherfucker rather smoke you than to help you get on. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's like we got that, that this what they called it in, in prison, that slave mentality hmm. where we was taught to go against each other, bring each other down. That's what it is. And we, it's like people stuck on that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you will pay a nigga to do a service for you, he a half-ass do the service, and then they'll say, support black businesses. For what? So you can fuck me over and I wanna fuck you up? Like, it's, 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 it's hard, man, and it's fucked up to say that, but it's the truth. You know what I'm saying? You will pay a motherfucker to do a service because you, and never do business with a nigga you cool with. Why is that? Because they're going to feel like they can handle you any kind of way. Hmm. They're going to feel like because y'all cool, they ain't got to do it the way they would do it for a motherfucker they don't know. You know what I'm saying? They're going to be like, oh, yeah, uh, man, I'm going to do it tomorrow, bro. I got you. That tomorrow turns into Tuesday of the next month. You know what I'm saying? And now you mad. Y'all arguing. Y'all done fell out. It's best to just pay. Meet a motherfucker you don't know to do a service. Don't make it a friendship. Just pay them to do the service and keep it pushing. Because me... I get in my feelings fast as fuck. I'm real passionate. So the moment you piss me off, you're going to know you piss me off. Because I'm going to show you you piss me off. Yeah. And I ain't going to hold back. I ain't going to not say what the fuck I'm feeling. That's why I ain't got no friends. And I'm cool with that. <laughs> Understood, man. And you would think the people that you, know, that you know, they would be the ones to support you the hardest, man. I can't name, listen. I can't name too many niggas that I'm cool with that support me. Hmm. It's always the outsiders. You know what I'm saying? I, I go to a local restaurant or something, they'll be like, hey, Tim Reggie, man, I listen to you all the time. And it'll shock you because you're like, damn, who the fuck is this? You don't know how big you are until somebody else show you. You know what I'm saying? 
crazy. No, nah, it's real. It's like if you came down here to Atlanta and little baby shots you out to the mall, right? Everyone in your city gonna be like reaching they out to you. They gonna start dick riding now. It always takes a nigga with a bigger name from another city mm -hmm. to turn you up in your city. Like, baby, he good with that shit. Drake, too, though. Oh, yeah. They'll turn an a a unknown motherfucker up so fast, but that's why they blessed in the way they moving. You know what I'm saying? Most rappers don't want to turn another rapper up because they feel like they're going to take their shine or take they, you know what I'm saying, or take the they light off of them. Yeah. You know? I Me, mean, you see, I didn't shout it out how many motherfuckers in this interview and don't care because I'm genuine like that. I'm not trying to not give you no shine. If I fuck with you, I'm going to let it be known I fuck with you. Yeah, because it's not going to hide it. Yeah, it's it not going to stop your blessings. Yeah, it ain't going gonna... to stop nothing for me because I'm still going to keep moving how I'm moving. I ain't going to not shout a nigga out because I, I ain't got no beef with niggas. For one. For two, I'm me. I'm going to say what the fuck I want to say. I don't care who feel what about it. That's what it is. Yeah, I feel that bad. Mm. So what's some goals you got set for yourself with the music, whether it's Short term or long term, man? Look, I, to be real, we got goals, but we switch them motherfuckers so much. Hmm. My team, I know they be tired of me, bro. <laughs> Josh, JB, bro, when I, I just, I don't be no, I be so indecisive with shit. And then I get mad so fast, I got an anger problem, bro. Like, I just get the sense and shit, and they'll both be looking like, what the fuck wrong with this nigga? Like, we just said we was finna do this, he just switched it and mad because we don't remember that he said we was gonna do this, now he done switched it to this. We remember the last thing, not this. But, you know, we, work, we working towards a lot, man. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going more hard now than I ever went yeah. for it. Because back then, I didn't think I can really do it. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't really see nobody making it. Hmm. Unless they was talking about killing them or, or fuck this dead person. You know what I'm saying? That's not me. I ain't with that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I got homies that is, and that's their preference. And I ain't going to knock them for it, but I don't do it. I got you, bro. What's some advice you would share to, you know, to the youth, to the kids coming up right now today? And let me tell you this, that's another thing. People get on this camera when you ask them that question mm -hmm. and they try to say the politically correct thing to sound good. I don't have no advice for no kids. I'm going to tell you why. Because they're going to do what they want to do. It starts in the household. No matter what I say on this camera, they're going to go do what they want to do because it's what they see every day. They're going to see this interview probably once, twice, you know, that's it. And they, they ain't going to stick to them. Everybody's attention span so short nowadays. You know what I'm saying? It starts with in their home. You can't tell no, no advice for no kids. Not nowadays. It ain't none. They're going to lie, oh, yeah, nigga, we heard that in 60 interviews. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be the different one and say I don't have no advice because they're going to do what they want to do anyway. Yeah. I can say, oh, yeah, stay in school. and School ain't for everybody. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not for everybody, which you should get it because you need it in life, but it's not for everybody, bro. Yeah. So what do you be teaching your kid then? I tell my son to go with what his gut tell him, what he feels. Whatever makes him happy, I let him do it. When you try to, like, you know, nowadays the internet's so crazy, everybody want to dress their kids up in designer and post them, but them be the ones who don't even see their motherfucking kids. You know what I'm saying? They do that, take the pictures, and go about their day. They hit the club, they go drunk with their friends. Not saying everybody, because I know some good ass parents that dress their kids well. You know what I'm saying? But it's a lot of them that that's what they stuck on, the likes. Dress their kid up, don't teach them shit, don't spend no time with them. Dress them up, put them in front of the camera. All right, I love my son so much, click. All right, now go over there with your daddy, or, or go over there with your cousins, or drop them off at their grandmama house. That's how this shit is nowadays, but I know it. And people don't want to like take the responsibility for them type of actions. So a lot of people ain't gonna like what I just said, but I don't care. Now social media is such a facade. Man, man that shit, I'm telling you. You, you can, can be, be whoever you want to be on social media. Whoever you want to be, bro, you can be that person in front of that camera. But guess what? At the end of the day, when you take all that shit off, and you go in that bathroom and look in that mirror, you still the same motherfucker. That camera is just Yeah, you can't fool yourself. You cannot well, actually, fool some yourself. people do. They, they start believing so a lie. Yeah, they start living a lie. You know, you got to just be yourself. I used to be one of them people who lied, like tried to fit in and tried to be this person to the point where it became like, all right, my mama told me something one day. She said, because I used to do it with women too. I was fucked up. Like... The thing is this, though, like my mama said, you don't ever want to pretend to be somebody to people because that's who they're going to fall in love with. But then 
when they figure out who you really are, they have no reason to love you no mm -hmm. more. And they feel played or, or bamboozled, feel, uh, what the, for manipulated, you know what I'm saying? So nowadays you just, I, I used to do that shit and I fucked up my, a couple of relationships like that, you know what I'm saying? And that shit will, when you try to be manipulative and, and lie your way through shit, it never, it never turns out right. Yeah. Never. That was great advice he gave you there. Yeah. Yeah. It'll catch you, bro. Oh, yeah. It'll catch you. All right, Reggie, you got a shout-out you'd like to give before we wrap it up here? I know you've been shouting out people all, all interview, though. Um, no, nah, I ain't really got no shout-outs. Um, shout-out ATM PJ. Fucking um, ATM Bay. Uh, Josh. Um, Will, Wilma. Uh, my wife. Shout out Ivana, uh, shout out my son. Everybody that support me, man, you know what I'm saying? Anybody that's in my life every day that try to help me get to another point in life, you know what I'm saying? I, I love y'all and I, I appreciate y'all. Bag, I did it. Fuck, saucing on niggas, I shit it. People will say that they love you, but really don't mean it. They'll turn you fast, I seen it. I get these niggas, they